So I've been promising the Ender 2 review for quite a while. It's time. This is the final thoughts on the Ender 2. Hey everybody, how's it going? Jason here with 3D Matter Makers. And real quick, just to start off, if you like these videos, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, they really help us out. Clicks are free and everybody wins. So after two months, we're finally gonna get around to doing the final review of the Ender 2. So let's get right to it. The Ender 2 is a 3D uh, printer made by Creality out of China with a build volume of 150 by 150 by 200 on the Z axis. It has a layer resolution down to 100 microns and it sells for well under $200 now. It comes mostly assembled already so it shouldn't take you too much time to get up and running, 30 to 45 minutes and you should be printing. Now a quick note on that Z axis, I did manage to get mine to print at 226 high on the Z um, and that's with a 2.2 millimeter glass bed down so you know that's how it worked out on mine. Mileage may vary, you might get more, you might get less, um, but 200 is the official height. The primary framing on this is 4020 along with some 2020 extruded aluminium. Um, there are mostly metal parts on the whole printer. There are a few acrylic parts, but nothing too major. If you want to print your own parts out of PLA, PETG, or ABS, there's plenty of designs out on Thingiverse to replace the acrylic parts on this printer, so feel free. Now the Ender 2 is a Bowden style extrusion system and it comes with an MK10 hot end and the bed is heated so you will be able to print in ABS and some other materials. The power supply that comes with this is a 12 volt 120 watt power supply that's detached. Now in my original review, which also happened to be my very first review that I did on YouTube, I said that this was the best printer for beginners in 2018. Is that still true? Well, maybe. I mean, it really depends on what your flavor is. You know, with the Ender 3 releasing, I would actually advise now that if you're going to buy your first printer to spend the few extra dollars and buy the Ender 3 as opposed to the Ender 2. But this is still a fantastic printer, especially for beginners. It's very simple to set up, very easy to configure, and you'll be printing great prints on it in no time flat. So let's get right into what I've been doing the past couple of months. This printer has hundreds and hundreds of hours of prints on it so far. This printer is pretty much my primary workhorse printer for the majority of my prints. And I've been printing everything from customer prints to prints for fun to prints for friends and families for birthday gifts or just nice surprises for my wife. Now since I've gotten it, I have made a few modifications to make it even more flexible and reliable. Um, but you know, let's, let's run through those modifications and see what I've done. So the first thing I did was I changed out the hot end for a Micro Swiss 300C flexible material hot end setup. Um, I did this primarily because I wanted to be able to print in flexible materials and more exotic filaments which require higher temperatures than 250C. Um, there's nothing wrong with the stock hot end that comes on this. I just wanted to print hotter for the, my own personal requirements. A quick note, if you do switch out for a Micro Swiss hot end or something similar, make sure you go into your slicer and lower your retraction down to two millimeters or less. Otherwise, you're gonna get clogs as the filament will get pulled beyond the hard heat break in the throat. Along with the Micro Swiss upgrade, I also switched the Bowden tubing to a Capricorn, the blue tube, um, because again, I wanted to print flexible materials and the Capricorn tube has a tighter tolerance which allows for better handling of flexible materials on the extrusion and the retraction. You'll also note I also upgraded the entire cooling fan housing. The fact that this unit does not come with a separate parts cooling fan is actually one of the downsides to this printer. So I found this cooling fan modification on Thingiverse, bought a pack of 40 millimeter by 10 millimeter fans off Amazon, and replaced the stock fan unit. This particular cooling mount has one fan dedicated to cooling the hot end and another that's dedicated to cooling the print and it's got the fang design. This allows even cooling on both sides of the print which will help with reducing blemishes in your print due to uneven cooling. Now a simple and cheap thing I did was put down a glass plate. Now I find printing on glass to give better bottom layer results in general and removing prints from the stock build plate surface on this Ender 2 can be a little bit difficult. Now, I also printed a new housing for the control box. I didn't like the LCD, you know, being horizontal and flat. This print tilted the control panel up, allowing easier use of the controls and better viewing of the screen. 
And an added bonus on this particular one is that there is a mount case for my Raspberry Pi running Octoprint. Now, there are some issues I've had with this printer. You know, aside from not having a parts cooling fan specifically dedicated, another issue I found is with the bed leveling knobs. They're really small and they're ridiculously hard to get access to, especially on the left side. Primarily because this printer uses a three-point bed leveling system. Now, I, I understand why they use it, because theoretically it's a better bed leveling system because it doesn't allow for the possibility of the plate really bending. But when you've got a three millimeter thick steel plate down as your bed, I, I really don't see the point of having to worry about that on such a small build plate surface. Of course, there are a ton of mods that are on Thingiverse, so you can just go print the larger knobs, um, but you're gonna, still gonna be kind of limited due to the positioning of that left knob where it's at underneath, and also the back right knob because of the limit switch in the back. Another issue is that I find myself having to constantly retighten all the nuts and bolts on this thing, um, especially on the carriage for the X and the Y and on the bearings, the roller bearings, I'm having to constantly tighten them. I would suggest that when you're assembling this, if you're assembling this for the first time, to go ahead and get a little bit of a Loctite and dab a little on the screws before you put them in. That way you won't have as much issue with the screws coming loose. Now a really annoying thing that I really hate about this particular setup is how close the hole is for the filament feed going into the extruder in relation to the z-axis rod i mean we're talking one or two millimeters away from that z-axis rod which ultimately means that your filament is going to be rubbing up against that rod and that rod has grease on it so you're actually pulling grease into your hot end which is not good for prints i don't know why creality hasn't fixed this because it's the exact same thing on the ender 3 right now but on the flip side, there are a lot of prints that you can do off of Thingiverse that have either filament guides or there's like a sleeve that you can print that goes around the rod for about 10 millimeters or so and protects the filament from rubbing against the rod. Now one last issue that I kind of have in general with the printer, and it's, it's not really a bad thing, but it is just kind of a limitation I found, is the tolerances. So I printed this, which is Angus's uh, from over at Maker's Muse Tolerance Test V2. Now, if you notice, all of these are nice and loose, um, even the 0.2 millimeter, except the 0.15. I've printed this probably six or seven times, continuously modifying all my settings, and I cannot get this one to come loose. It always breaks. So 0.2 millimeters, at least for me, 0.2 millimeters seems to be the sweet spot, the lowest that I can go when it comes to tolerances. Now, I know there's probably a lot of people who have printed this and successfully with the Ender 2, even in its stock configuration. I'm just telling you that in my experience, no matter what settings I get, I cannot get the 0.15 to break free. So, in summary, is the Ender 2 still the best printer for beginners in 2018? It's still a great printer, and as you would expect, there's a lot of other printers releasing. This is becoming a really fast-growing industry, and it's expected to see a lot better printers coming out around the same price range. For me personally, until I got my Ender 3 in, you know, this Ender 2 was still my workhorse, and it still is my workhorse. I still use it for printing most of my parts. It's just, for the extra few dollars, you can buy the Ender 3 and have a larger build volume. Kind of a win-win there. So coming up in the next few weeks, we're going to have follow-up reviews on the FormBot Raptor, and we'll also be swinging back and covering the Ender 3 again and seeing how we're doing about a month in or so. Now I am working on sneaking in some new purchases of printers. Um, I just have to find a way to buy them and then set them up in a manner that my wife doesn't know um, for fear that she might kill me for buying another printer. Now if you have suggestions of other things that you'd like for us to cover in upcoming videos, please feel free to leave a comment below of things that you'd like to see covered and we will do our best to make sure that we get to those items and make videos on those things that you all want. You can also reach out to us on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or our website, 3dmattermakers.com, and just let us know what it is that you all, the audience, want. So again, if you have not done so yet, please click the subscribe button. Um, it really helps the channel out a lot, and if you like the video, make sure you do like the video also. And if you want to get notifications of when we release new videos, just click the little bell icon and every time we release a new video, which is pretty much every single week, 
you will get a little ringing notification on your phone or whatever you have that'll say, hey, we got a new video out. And that's always a good thing. So thanks for joining us. I hope you found this helpful and informative. Don't forget, it doesn't matter what you're making as long as you're making matter. I'm Jason, and I'll catch you all next week.